years. Uh, we don't care what it is. We invest in carpeting to energy to uh, uh, to non-alcoholic beer to you name it. You got it. Uh, as long as it makes business sense, uh, we'll we'll put money into it. So this is about valuation, uh, and you know I was asked, you know, what's the difference between valuation differences between you know Latin America or like South America and 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 and, and in Canada, it's it's really you know uh, this guy says it all. This guy, uh, value is what you get, price is what you pay. Uh, it's really very a, uh, uh, it's not necessarily a scientific kind of approach, especially especially when you're dealing with the angel investment world. Uh, it is uh, you know we do we do obviously look at you know we do formal valuation practices. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, it, uh, there is a, a, a level of emotion uh, that goes into whatever decision you make in whatever company you make into. Uh, and I tell this to every single person, there is an investor for every single company. Uh, we've seen people putting money into crazy things, and we were just talking about that a little while ago, that it's just, it's just nuts. But then again, there is an agenda for everybody as well, and I'll get into that. Um, very quickly, some of the different uh, uh, deal structures that we deal with. In Canada, we're really on the common share and convertible debt uh, areas. The warrants and the royalties are always kind of add-ons to this. Uh, we do not do a lot of safe share in Canada. Uh, it's really, we don't find them uh, uh, as valuable uh, for, for for our investors at least, but really uh, uh, equity or debt is what we're really focusing on. So, I mean, I think we talked about this quite a bit throughout the day. Um, the first question you have to ask if you're gonna go into the startup visa or whatever, why Canada? Uh, you know, what is what is the value that this country will bring to your company? Is it, uh, uh, is it distribution? I mean, don't get me wrong, we've brought in companies from overseas that receive from Europe that received distribution in Asia through us here in Toronto. So you have to keep a very open mind and you have to keep, uh, you have to really kind of calculate this because coming to a different country, if I go to Mexico to raise money, I don't know a single person. Who am I going to do? What am I going to do? Where you really need to do your homework because there is a cost of capital. Uh, and there is a cost of time as well. Uh, and you need to make sure that at the end of the day, the amount that you're going to raise and the connections that you're going to make uh, actually make business sense. Uh, the first question we ask any entrepreneur is that it's not how much money you're looking for, how much money you really need, uh, and what are you going to use it for? Uh, how big are you doing? Where is it going to get you? Uh, if it's going to get you to the, uh, the halfway to what we think is going to be an exit, then okay, we're in. Uh, but if you really don't have a clear idea, then you're going to have a really tough time with the angel community. That's the easy thing to me as well. Um, I mean, the grass is not always greener. Uh, especially, I, I, I see this from you know many of the emerging markets uh, companies that come in and the investors. They think that you know Canadian investors are really sophisticated and really uh, uh, you know they know exactly what's going on. And all these companies need to be you know they have to have their books in order. They have to to a sense, books and order is a very good corporate governance. Is a very, is, is a, very uh, a legitimate issue, not just in Canada, but in, uh, all across the world. But uh, but at the end of the day, this is about the opportunity for your business. Uh, it's not always you get more sophisticated investors here. It's about what kind of an opportunity for your business are you going to get here. Just to, if I put my business, I uh, took my business to uh, to Latin America. I need to know what the potential is. Uh, what how big is the market? in Brazil or in, across the other, how quickly can I scale? If I don't know that, I, I'm not going to go in to try to raise half a million bucks. It's not worth it. Um, valuation, what's valuation based on? I mean, it's uh, you really kind of have to prepare yourself to take the lead on any type of a, uh, a negotiation. If you come to me and say, you know what, I don't know what my valuation is and we can negotiate on a deal, I'm going to get you. Uh, you're, you don't come in at a position of weakness here. Uh, you must uh, come in with a position of strength. You must come in with a term sheet in hand. You must come in with existing investors in hand. 
so that you could get uh, make the, uh, the traction that you're really looking for. Uh, be proactive. Uh, don't leave it only up to the angel community to make that decision for you because if, if you do, we will deliver it for you. We'll, we'll give you a term sheet, but it may not be on the best terms. Uh, a, I've said this over and over again, every angel investor has its own agenda. Uh, we've seen people invest into companies so that their kid can get employed in the company. Uh, many times uh, people invest into companies to take him overseas to their uh, original company to, to merge or do anything to, for distribution purposes. Uh, so you really need to keep an open mind on what the person, and an investment can come in any way, shape, or form. It, 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 it could be money, it could be distribution, it could be connections, it could be anything. Uh, so it's not just straight out cash. Uh, and this is, this is very important. Uh, and, and the other thing, obviously, is that if you're talking to angel investors, I can guarantee you every single person in this group is going to say, start with a no. Why would I ever invest in your company? It's your job as a, as a CEO to change their mind to a potential maybe, uh, and then hopefully after some dialogue, uh, change them into a, yes, I'll put my 50K in, 100K, 250K in, uh, and then we can do it from there. It's, it's a grueling process. If you have the means to grow your company in any, way other, in any other uh, fashion, do it. Uh, but use the capital that you're going to receive from angels as, as, as a push to scale. Uh, it's absolutely uh, uh, critical for your company's existence. Um, you know, we're not very different. We don't look at many different things than, than uh, investors from different parts of the world. In fact, with Credit Forum, we're a little bit more normalized, so we can actually syndicate deals all around the world with the type of information, with the normalized part of information. Uh, you know, traction today, the scaling IP trade secrets is, uh, is, is incredibly important. Uh, the company owns the IP and what the transfers are from the universities, and it's, uh, it's that kind of a deal, uh, and, and how strong your IP is. Uh, it's going to kind of hold water. Uh, track record team, especially if you're coming in for an emerging market, uh, you're going to want some you know, superstars on your team uh, in that market if you're going to see any type of traction with investors here in Canada. Uh, evaluation. I mean, I guess I haven't really talked about valuation, but the valuation is the number one killer of deals. Uh, we, uh, well, uh, I'll answer that. Um, let's say you come in with a higher valuation. And let's say you have a couple of uh, investors you bring on, your original investors, and then, you know, you come in uh, from that, you know, your, 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 your valuation is pretty high. Uh, First, you're not going to get traction, uh, and if you do, uh, especially once you move up the uh, up the investment chain into more formalized institutional VC, etc., uh, they may push your valuation down. And the last thing you want is to give your existing investors a haircut. Uh, it, it's just not going to work for you. Uh, don't kill your deal because I can guarantee you, you have another round, two rounds coming up after your angel round. I can guarantee you. And you can't really you know, price your round out of the market with family and friends. Uh, you need to be very methodical here. You need to be very uh, practical, pragmatic. Uh, if you do not, uh, it, this is a process to exit. Uh, and the people who are in the company at a very early, early stage need to know that you know, there is going to be, uh, you know, multiple X returns eventually. Uh, you, know, you don't want to get into a company that's worth 20 million pre-money and then you know five years later it's worth 21, 25 on the next round. Uh, that's that's although you're making money, but still uh, it's not it's not worth the uh, the angel money. Uh, I mean, we've talked about this again, I'm just kind of repeating what everybody else said throughout the entire day, is, uh, is it's next to impossible for any company to just kind of waltz into a different country and expect money and cash. The best way to do it is to partnership, uh, build your partnership. This way you can actually build your valuation, uh, justify your valuation, 
uh, and build your uh, build your customer customer base. At the end of the way, that's that's what you're going to do, right? And that's that's your that's your entire goal. Uh, and that will dictate and that will dictate a better valuation for your company. Uh, and and you can then play around in, with different countries, taking your uh, taking your valuation to India or wherever to the to, to the valley. Uh, and playing with the VCs there at a different different valuation. Sure, I think that's it. Not much on valuation. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> okay, so um, sorry, back to my earlier point. So last year, average deal. I don't know. In Canada's one pre money, one point five and three hundred fifty thousand. Do you concur with that? And then, what about this year? Well, I don't have a specific. Statistic on how big the things, but yes, I, I, I do agree that the valuations have increased a little bit over the past couple of years. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's a balloon or anything like that. Uh, I think over the past five or six years, the Canadian ecosystem has actually matured quite a bit, uh, significantly, uh, in fact. So we now have a lot more struggles than we did even five years ago. And the, uh, the, the level of, uh, of sophistication of the startups, how they present their company, how they value themselves, how they put together their scale up, etc., has matured quite a bit just over the past five years. Uh, and that's, I think, a, a direct result of a lot of the resources that are being put towards it. I think five, ten years ago, we would not, we may not have been having this discussion. Uh, so uh, there's, there's been a lot of sophistication uh, uh, put, into the, uh, put into the system here. Uh, so, just when someone, uh, some company started, uh, you said that the money that he has is what he needs, right? Uh, uh, but has more than one strategy, right? Uh, with this, this money I can uh, get more marketing or take up faster my, my, my product, uh, and this can change the evaluation of the company uh, asking for a first round mm -hmm. uh, with an agent. Uh, this is common <coughs> to handle how you uh, You really want to be going for strategic investors. Uh, you know, there are people that will throw in 50000 well, whatever dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people who follow lead investors, uh, especially in the angel community, uh, we do that, I do that a lot. Uh, but you, if you're going to come into the market with, with a strategic investor, an investor that not only will put in 100, 150, whatever, but also will be able to land and secure a client, uh, a real significant anchor client in this market. Uh, if not, it's just $100,000. You're just not you're going to eat through that in a second, and you're not going to produce much. Uh, strategic investors, just like if we went to uh, any of the Latin markets, if you don't have that strategic investor, you, that it, it's it's key if you're uh, if you're in the angel space, right? even if you're in the VC space, you got to pick the VC uh, correctly as well. Those that can actually propel you, they'll pick you as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you, how long does does it take for entry investors to close a deal? At average. It depends what sector you're in. So if, uh, if we're dealing with life sciences and pharma, it takes a little longer, like six months or so. But if you're dealing with some of the technology, we close deals in a week. Let's say about a month to two months. Uh, especially, what you really want to do is you want to come in with you cannot just waltz into an angel meeting and you know with some sort of due diligence done, with some sort of investor to the I want access to your other investors. I want to give them a call. That's that's half the due diligence. Uh, if I want to speak to your existing investors. Uh, so just be be prepared for a, a quick kind of be open. Uh, remember uh, to take control of the dialogue uh, and you can close it you know, 